pretty wrecked. Everything's quite sore. Um, feel hungover. <sighs> um, yeah, everything's just a bit sensitive. Yeah, I don't know. I've got seven sets of glasses dotted around. I need an eyesight to see them. What about these ones? Oh, yes. So what we got, golfy mission, big ball, feeding the pony, no content, no social. Nemo's, that's the hardest. To me, that's the toughest one. Picking hundreds, isn't there? There's lots of short ones. 44 in total. Counted. My idea is to ride every trail in the golf field. Max fit, but that's a big hill. On my list is about 45 trails. Wow, did it? <laughs> and yeah, try and do it as quick as I can, hopefully within a day. How long do I think it's going to take? 16, 20? I don't even know what the stats are. If it's pissing with rain, it'll be a mission. What do you go for? Difficult first. Point to point routes are quite simple psychologically. Laps, mentally, I think that's way harder. The beauty of it is that, you know, maybe in a few weeks, a few months, there'll be a new trail up there and then my effort is out the window. Someone else can give it a go. I don't think anyone else has even considered doing it recently because it's just so obviously not possible. Type 2 fun, just to, you know, push the boy out and see what's actually possible up there and hopefully it'll be a day to remember. Just the chafe is just higher. When was the last time you were up this early? I can't remember. Long time ago. Probably lockdown actually, I did a K2. But that was easy, there was nothing else in the world to do apart from this. Hey. Yeah. Why did you even want to do that? <laughs> I do love a mission every now and then. Just want to get this show on the road really. I didn't want it to be like dead serious or anything. I just wanted to get kind of a light-hearted, fun, to see if it was possible, really. And to have like something like that on your doorstep to make a challenge of is pretty cool. We we're now on the way to feed the pony. I think it's one of the longest trails here. Yeah, get these three big ones out of the way, are they? I started the day just riding, going pretty hard, having fun. That's what my plan was, just descending like I would generally descend. Just trying not to get ahead of myself and not trying to go too fast down the way because you get punctured. But some of the trails I can just ride them with my eyes shut. I don't know where the gaps are, I know where, where, where everything is. These cruising speeds, my flat out speed. You're, you know, picking a team of people to do, I don't know, whatever, you some crazy mission, you pick guys on your team and nothing's ever a problem. And he's got good crack sometimes as well. Just rolled out my bed, took a sweet potato out of its skin, like a toothpaste, like squeezed it out of the skin into my mouth. Then it got stuck in my throat, couldn't swallow it. Does this crack like? It's wearing thin. Dogs are wondering what was happening. I'll never be doing that again. Sweet tatty for breakfast. <laughs> oh, Jake's coming. How does this one feel on the leg? This is the wee bit of push, just because it saves my heart rate. Right. How many trails have you done so far? It's all a ton now, but all the slow, steep ones. Two thirds of the way through, and I was like, oh, this is it, we're on. Riding pretty fast down tracks with Jake and Gaz, almost like an all day at the golf day. So two people that I know of have tried it before me. Steve Dees, he tried it, I think it was back in 2019. When I done it, I had a really nice day. I ripped a set of shorts, boned Rachel. Bring me some new shorts. It was less trails, I think his ride was around 7,000 metres. And then more recently, Shea Hayton's tried it and he got within four or five trails of completing it. And to get that close and for someone to pull out, I was like, oh, it must have been proper grim. like a really heavy shower that went on for a good hour or two. Like heavy, heavy rain. The trails are like absolute rivers, so this is going to be the hardest bit. 
We were about to drop into Greg's and it just started going for it. So we were like, well, we'll wait at the bottom. And we did wait at the bottom and I looked at the weather and it was just going to keep going. So just cracked on. I am generally a bit of a fair weather rider these days. If it rains, I just wait for it to stop or I make another plan and go later or whatever, you know what I mean? It wasn't until after that rain, that final third, where I started kind of thinking about survival. I had certain trails in my head. I was just like, just get down these. There's nothing else for it. And I did it about three hours of just crisps and coke, which is vile, but it was the only thing that would keep my stomach kind of turning over. I've changed a little. I'm going to repeat lower at the end. So I have to go all the way down, because that will break my head. And you'll just sit, literally watch me going in circles on the last bit. Well, I did think at one time, it was just, oh, I could just be chilling, sit at home. Like, no one would care. Yeah, I just had to have a word with myself, to be fair, and keep going. I think Marky's maybe 7,000 metres in now, and we've got quite a bit to go, so... <laughs> like, we were just sitting in the living room there, watching all that rain pass through. We ate dinner and we're like, yeah, we need to go up. I knew what I was signing up for. I put myself in that bubble of doing stupid stuff every now and then, so it's my own fault. When you start getting delirious on big rides, it's definitely the way down that kind of gets you, you sort of start seeing things and you're like, oh my God, what's that? And then riding horribly. Descending in the dark takes a lot more brain power. It's hard to perceive like holes and see definition of what a bank was or anything. You just make stuff out of nothing. He's a bit less chatty than he was yesterday. The tiredest I've ever seen him. It's quite nice to know that they're still human, these guys, isn't it? I've never seen him ride so slowly down a hill. Like, if someone like me is having a break to not run into him, it's going terribly, terribly wrong. No, I'll enjoy this day enough. with the one day in my life where I can hassle him down the trail and then normal service will be resumed. You've got to have technical riding skill because yeah. there's so many gnarly descents. And you've got to be a monster for fitness and you've got to be stubborn and you've got to know this hill inside out. You could even have someone who has all of that who's never ridden here and they couldn't do it. A dodgy belly. Which is the only thing I'm annoyed about, but this is what it is. Trevor next. Yeah. You good? Yeah. There you go. How's he looking? Tired. Tired, muddy, but we're on the home straight now, so just got to keep pushing on, you know? That was class. Mad. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good times. It was really good at times and really shit at times. I didn't really have any expectations, I just knew it was going to be a big day. I always kind of think it's going to be easier than it is. That's kind of what gets me like into it to begin with, is like, oh, he's fine. Completed it, mate. I completed the golf, eh? I won't be back here for about a year. <laughs> ah, as soon as someone does a new track, it'll be void. Which is pretty cool, I think, as well. Ah, it's, it's a special place, I think. And yeah, hopefully, you know, someone can try it after me. Whoever's up next, stupid enough. Yeah, big up to everyone that came out and helped me as well. We didn't need to do that. I didn't even have a time in my head. I didn't know the distance. I knew it was going to be about 8,000 plus. I think it's just better just not knowing some stuff. 